For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodin twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Tonight, from the Veterans Administration Hospital at Sawtell, California, Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodin Show, starring Bob Hope and his special guest, Bing Crosby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob broadcasting from the Sawtell Veterans Hospital on Christmas Eve, Hope, telling all you guys that using Pepsodent will never hurt your purse, and when you whisper sweet nothings in the ear of your nurse, you'll never have to worry if your teeth are in right or in reverse. <laughs> yes, sir. Here we are at the Veterans Administration Hospital at Sawtell. That's a medical term meaning jab the needle in my left arm this time, Nursey. I've already rented my right one out for a piccolo. <laughs> I had a little trouble getting Crosby into the hospital. Dr. Hubbard took one look at him and said it was too late. <laughs> they really have a lot of ground here at Sawtell. This morning, a doctor was making a tour of inspection and discovered three Spanish-American war veterans still firing. <laughs> And they have three kinds of passes here 24 hour, 36 hour And I'm in the tunnel, try and get me <laughs> And I found out why they call this Sawtell I went through that Wilshire, Wilshire tunnel And the things I saw, I'd never tell <laughs> Most of these patients here are ambulatory Ambulatory, that's a nurse's expression Meaning, for heaven's sake, doctor, trip them The next time we come around the building One of these nurses was missing yesterday and they couldn't figure out what had happened to her until they saw one of the patients chasing his duffel bag down the hall. <laughs> but I'm thrilled that I'm here. I had Christmas Eve dinner with these veterans and before we started to eat, I made a very appealing talk, but I still had to pay. <laughs> what a dinner. It's a memory. It's a memory I'll never forget. I've got the scars to remind me. These veterans really went after that food. It's the first time I ever saw a diving board in a gravy bowl. <laughs> they ate 10 pounds of cranberries before somebody told them they were supposed to take them out of the cans first. <laughs> One poor guy was on a liquid diet, liquid diet. He dampened the turkey before he swallowed it whole. <laughs> and after they'd finished everything inside, I said, shall I call the waiter? They said, no, call the cook. He's got more meat on him. But it's a wonderful Yuletide, and I gave away a lot of fine, expensive presents this year. <laughs> it's been a wonderful Christmas. I've been a regular Santa Claus. <laughs> it takes more than a pouch to make a Santa hope. <laughs> oh, you're still up there in my head, eh, conscience? What's wrong with you now? Well, you didn't give me a present. Why should I? All you ever gave me was dandruff. <laughs> What about the time I saved your life when you were a baby? I don't remember your saving my life. Who do you think stopped your father from drowning you? <laughs> but I guess I do owe you something, Conch. After all, you've stuck with me through thick and thin. Only through thick, Hope. Remember, I'm in your head. Anyway, why should I give you anything for Christmas? What'd you ever do for me? What'd I ever do for you? Why, Robbie boy, I've done a lot for you. Remember when you were a little boy, you were crossing the railroad tracks, you didn't see a train coming? Suddenly a little voice warned you just in time. I saved your life. That's right, I remember, Conch. Why, you saved my life. If it weren't for you, there would be no Bob Hope. Yeah, can you blame me for staying up here and never showing my face? <laughs> Poor Miriam, poor Miriam, neglected using Miriam, so her sing and smile had no winning style. I'll be home for Christmas. 
Oh, no. Not you. Let go. So folks don't be like Miriam. You there The first time you try the new improved Pepsid and Toothpaste, something wonderful happens to you. Your teeth look so radiantly bright. Your whole mouth feels so gloriously clean. For this new Pepsodent with Arium cleans in a way no other toothpaste can. You notice first its difference in taste. This new Pepsodent has a cleaner, brighter taste that means cleaner, brighter teeth. Next, you feel the difference in the way it cleans. This new Pepsodent contains more Arium, so it gives an abundance of invigorating foam. It cleans in between and around your teeth better and cleans your breath better, too. Remember, Pepsodent alone among toothpaste gives you this active irium foam. It sweeps dulling film away, uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. Let your taste tell you. Let your mirror show you that something wonderful happens the moment you change to this new Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using Miriam for sing and smile, have the men in style. I'll be home for tonight. Mm-hmm. Some smile. I'll say that. So folks just be like Miriam, use the beautiful Columbia recording singing star to sing a very appropriate song. A Christmas song, Miss Doris Day. gentlemen, tonight we have with us a veteran who has a few words to say to you on this Christmas Eve. A veteran who is one of our great leaders with a soft spot in his heart for all of you. He's a man who has fought with you in war and is fighting for you in peace. The boss man of the entire Veterans Administration, General Omar Bradley. Hello, Bob. Thank you for this opportunity to say Merry Christmas to all veterans everywhere, but especially to those who are in VA hospitals tonight. I'm sorry that so many of you must spend this Christmas under medical care. We're doing everything possible to make your Christmas as happy as it can be, away from home, in a hospital bed. I hope that by next year, we will have many of you back on your feet so that you can celebrate Christmas at home with your families. And now, speaking for the thousands of you in our hospitals, I want to thank Bob Hope 
and all his associates of radio, motion pictures, and stage for remembering that the war is not over for thousands of veterans. Wherever there are sick and wounded veterans tonight, I know they would want me to tell you, Bob, how much it means to be remembered, how nice it is to be included in your Christmas parties and shows. We know that you will be with us again throughout the coming year. Thank you very much, General Omar Bradley. We all consider it a privilege to entertain these veterans, and ladies and gentlemen, it's very interesting to visit hospitals such as this one here at Sawtell. You never know whom you're going to meet. Oh, well, Miss Vera Vey, yes, yes. Sure, well, Miss Vera Vey, Santy's auntie. Oh, well, well, Mr. Hope, Dunder's blunder. <laughs> well, now, Miss Vey, here it is the time of the year you're supposed to show goodwill toward all men. Goodness, is there a season for us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is, Miss Vague, and this is it, Christmas. Today we must love our fellow man. Oh, you silly boy. Why do you think I've been visiting the wards? <laughs> well, tell me, did you make any headway with the boys, Miss Vague? Well, I was doing fine until the nurse made me take off the red robe. <laughs> I hope a pretty girl just isn't safe going through these wars. Is that so? And how did you find it? Oh! <laughs> oh, you dear bunion brain. <laughs> yes. Why don't you run down to X-ray and find out why your head rattles? Yeah. Really, Mr. Hope, visiting a ward was just wonderful, and every one of the boys gave me the sweetest smile. Well, naturally, they had to be quiet in the hospital. They're not permitted to laugh out loud. Oh, my, bless your heart. <laughs> don't you know people in glass heads shouldn't throw stones? You don't realize that I studied nursing for years. I'm a trained nurse. Who trained you, Frank Buck? <laughs> Go on, go on, make fun of me, I don't care. I have a blind date for the cute boy in the tunnel at eight. <laughs> I have to be there at seven. At seven? Why an hour early? Anxious? No, but I want plenty of time to short circuit the light. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Vervey. And now, folks, I have a big surprise for you. I'm playing Santa tonight for the boys here. And so as to not disappoint them, here's the bag now. Bing Crosby, right here. <laughs> well, 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 good old trout snout. Hmm. <laughs> How goes it, my Pepsi and Pinocchio? Uh, <laughs> that's them. That's Tell me, Lord. <laughs> Is it a lime cola on you or something? To... <laughs> Tell me, Lord, does my broadcast have anything to do with your being here? Or did you just come in for your regular shot? <laughs> just a moment. This is Christmas, the season of good cheer and good fellowship. Mm -hmm. Why don't we forego for tonight this girlish vilification and become... Oh, no! Become... <laughs> oh, break it up for us peasants, will you please? <laughs> what, vilification a little? Yes, little... Very nice, very oh, nice. Yes. Wait till Gonzaga Dude. finds out about this. <laughs> Let's be chums all tonight. I'm beat oh, back. I, I think you're right, sure. Bing. I'm sorry. It's, it, we should. It's, after all, we should have the Yuletide spirit. I want to tell you it's an honor to have you on my show. Thank you, Bob. You, the great Bing Crosby, the country's most magnificent voice on my poor, crummy little program. <laughs> nothing. Really. It's nothing, old man. To my partner. It's a thrill for me to work with America's foremost comedian, America's finest actor. What's wrong with Canada? <laughs> well, the world's finest comedian, the world's finest actor. You are indeed good to have me here. <laughs> but no, this philanthropic gesture out of your bountiful goodness to pay tribute to me, a lowly punster is merely a small symbol of your munificence. Mm. <clears throat> I think we got more laughs with the insults. <laughs> Well, 
anyway, now it can be told, Bing, you're my favorite singer. Take Como, Sinatra, Russell Haynes. I'm better, huh? No comparison. None of them were anywhere near as good as you were at their age. <laughs> now you wait a minute, blubberhead. It's Christmas. Well, uh, I know you don't mean what you said. Deep down inside, you're a regular guy. Thanks. It's the outside that's irregular. <laughs> Now listen, Elephant Boy, I ah, want to tell ah, you ah, one ah, thing. Christmas, Christmas, remember? Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw you and your kids out singing carols on Vine Street last night. So what's wrong with singing carols? Well, you should sing them right through, not stop after each chorus and put in a commercial about Philco's. <laughs> and who was that other little boy? Other little boy? Yeah, the one who kept following your boys around while they were singing. Oh, him? Oh, that's Petrillo's son collecting dues. Off. Now that I'm here, oh. this is as good a time as any of uh, my presents. You have something for me, haven't you? Some little gift or something? Well, I had something real nice for you, Bing, but Mother thought she'd wear them a little longer. <laughs> I'll only take that because there's a big favor I want to ask you. Uh, how would you like to play Santa Claus over at my house tonight, Robin? Well, what's the matter? Can't you fit down the chimney anymore? No. Just that this year we're keeping the fire going, and my kids just love baked ham. <laughs> Well, they ought to. They've been living with one for years, you know. <laughs> but believe me, ears, I'll make a fine Santa Claus. Ears. I really will. I'll be a fine Santa Claus. I'll, I'll just tuck a pillow in the front. Good. From the rear, you're already in character. You really... <laughs> Wait a minute. Right. That's not all me. Where do you hide your Christmas <laughs> presents? Hello, Bob. Oh, Desi, this is Bing Crosby. You've heard of him. Oh, sure. He's the American Tito Guitar. Yeah. Hello, Tito. Habla espanol. Habla espanol, sí. sí. Así como no. Amigo, uh, el señor Hope. Es muy simpático, ¿no? Sí, simpático, pero chico, no, el dinero. No muy... dinero. No, no, no dinero. No, muy wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Wait, something tells me I'm not getting the best of this play, Desi. <laughs> Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now hear from the voice of Firestone. Retreaded, Mr. Crowley. Thank you very much. That's Mr. Bing Crosby and the Meltones, ladies and gentlemen. Stand by, Bing. Now, Wendell Niles, I understand you have something very special to hustle for the sponsor tonight. Yes, I have, Bob. Well, let's have it, Wen. On behalf of Lever Brothers and Pepsodin, I want to wish all our listeners a very Merry Christmas. Isn't that fine? Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a stirring Christmas story entitled... The Road to the North Pole, or Santa Claus Rides Again. We now take you to the faraway hideout of St. Nick. As we look in on this prefabricated igloo, jolly old Santa is making ready for his yearly trip. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, You're mighty hey. jolly this Christmas, Carl. Jolly nothing. My red flannel's tickled. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Going off on those trips and leaving me alone up here. Couldn't it sometimes I'm sorry I saw you working in that bargain basement and married you? Well, what makes you say that, Ma? Well, of all the things in the May Company, I had to get the one you can't bring back and get your money back on. <laughs> well, stop complaining, Ma. How many women can go to bed and sleep nice and warm all night under their husband's beard? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I wonder who that can be. Are you Santa Claus? What do you know, Maud? Topsy. Shelter. Shelter at last. Oh, I can't go on. I can't go on any further. Please. Please let me in. Please let me in. Come on, you got one, Oscar. Don't overdo it. <laughs> What can I do for you, stranger? Well, tonight, Santa, I want you to stop to the Veterans Hospital at Sawtell and bring something special for the boys. Uh -huh. Something they've been waiting for all year. All oh, their pension checks, huh? <laughs> well, they'll get them. That Crosby fellow's bringing them on a horse. I don't know, son. <laughs> Tell me, have they been good boys at Sawtell? Don't be too hard on them, Santa. They can't help us. What do you mean? Well, you should see those nurses. <laughs> yeah. 
pretty nurses, huh? Yeah. Hang on, here we go! <laughs> up Dancer, up Prancer, up Thunder and Blitzen, up Fortescue. Fortescue, what's he doing in there? He's a CIO organizer. Get out! <laughs> Isn't it wonderful up here? Look down at that earth below us there, son. This is a night of brotherly love. Everybody's friends. See that house all lighted up? That's George Raft's place. He's giving a big party for attorneys tonight. <laughs> ah, aren't they, Mary? And just look down there through that window over there. John L. Lewis is in the basement of the White House. He's shoveling coal in the furnace. <laughs> oh, God. You see that there? What's that there? That's the peace conference. That guy is Molotov walking back in. I right know. Where, where? <laughs> and a little further on, I'll even show you an audience applauding blue skies. Right down there. <laughs> Take off. You mean to tell me everyone is friendly tonight? What about Harry Cohn and, and Charlie Veeder? Oh, everything is fine with them now. They're not talking. Oh. <laughs> Pull over to the side of the cloud. Pull over there. But officer... Pull over, you just passed the red star. Let's see your driver's license. Why, I'm old St. Nick. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, sir, good old St. Nick. Ha, 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 And drunk, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not drunk, officer. Now, just what's the charge? Speeding and driving drunken horses. Just a minute. Those aren't drunken horses. Oh, no? Then what are they doing going around stealing hat racks? All right, don't give me that. Don't give me that double talk. I'm on duty up here. You're on duty, but we're ten thousand feet above the ground. What duty? Rose Bowl traffic, top layer. <laughs> Why, this is ridiculous. How does your motorcycle stay up in the air? Firestone balloon tires. And how do you stay up here? Oh, Sullivan balloon heels. <laughs> Sorry, boys, I'll have to arrest you. But officer, I'm trying to tell you, I'm Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Ah, yes, I know your sister well. My sister? Yes, Santa Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Monica. Officer, you surprised me. No, you surprised me. I got the hiccup. Yeah. How'd you get the hiccup? Just had a Tom and Jerry. <laughs> that was Tom. Listen, officer. <laughs> Who's that? That was Jerry. <laughs> Listen, officer. <laughs> what was that? Relative. <laughs> well, I'll have to give you two boys a ticket. Well, it looks like we're in a jam, Santa. Yeah, and I know this officer can't be bribed. Who says so? <laughs> well, we can't waste any more time with you, officer. I've got to go all over the world tonight. Get up! Stop! Stop! Or I'll shoot! You'll never stop us with that cologne. It's only a water pistol. Yeah, and sometimes I wish I wasn't a California cop. <laughs> oh, there's the Sawtell Hospital over there. Head in for a landing. Are you sure it's the Sawtell Hospital? Yeah, the building fell out. No gambling. <laughs> We're going down. Okay, Santa, we're heading right down the chimney. Well, well, they were going to remodel this wing anyway. <laughs> Here's the bottom of the chimney. I'll walk out through the fireplace. Hi, everybody. Here I am. Hi. Let me welcome you to Salt Hill Hospital, Santa Claus. I'm Dr. Hubbard. Dr. Hubbard, huh? Yes, I'm the head of the hospital. Here, shake hands. Well, hiya, Dr. Hubbard. Put it there. Ouch! Ouch! My arm! <laughs> well, what's the matter? What a sneaky way to give a man a hypodermic.
Friends, that was beautiful. Like Santa Claus at the orphanage, it really came packed with Christmas spirit. Sincerely, old man, your silent night has always put an arm around my heart and given it a big hug. Well, Bob, I only wish that I could have come to Sawtell Hospital tonight and sung Silent Night in an empty theater. That would have meant that these 6,000 wounded veterans had gone home for Christmas. And cut us out of a studio audience? Oh, <laughs> they wouldn't dare play a trick like that. <laughs> Seriously, Bing, it's Christmas Eve. What a night. Miles of homes lit up like an endless store window. Living rooms chock full of pine needles and presents. Doorbells ringing and folks barging in with greetings. Telephones ringing and loved ones calling from across the miles. Radios turned down soft for the Christmas carol. Mother humming away in the kitchen while she stuffed the turkey. Not exactly the perfect night for a veteran to spend in a hospital. What night is? Bing, if you could ask Santa for anything, what would it be? If the fellows here at Sawtell and in all of Uncle Sam's hospitals could have their health back. How about you, Robert? Well, when old Santa visits the mothers and wives and children of the fellows who didn't come back, I'd like to ask him to fill every stocking so full of Christmas cheer that there's enough left over to fill the empty place in every heart. Good night. Merry Christmas, folks. Merry Christmas, Santa! Merry Christmas, Santa! This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.